diagnosis of unexplained RPL. So pre-implantation genetic screening. So what is pre-implantation genetic screening? PGS has recently been proposed as an option for couples with RPL. So PGS involves the analysis of all 23 chromosome pairs with several molecular techniques used across the years, including of these are the high uh, expensive techniques, but still it is very helpful in these patients. These include fluorescent uh, in situ hybridization, comparative genomic hybridization, uh, array uh, CGH, single nucleotide polymorphism array, quantity or real-time PCR test, and next generation sequencing. These are the higher uh, quality PGS which are done uh, in a well-equipped setup usually. Uh, mainly these uh, shows that gen this genetic analysis will be highly uh, important uh, to select the uh, mainly in the in case of uh, IVF in, in, in vitro fertilization. Next. Uh, so randomized control trials and recent meta-analysis showed that the transfer of euploid embryos following PGA significantly improves pregnancy. Currently, several non-invasive techn uh, te technologies are being developed for PGA such as transcriptometers, metabolomics, uh, epigenomics, and mitochondrial function test. With continuous technological developments and cost reduction, it is likely that PGS will help improving in vitro uh, fertilization efficiency. If PGS is in, I mean, if the patient, patients are uh, economically, sound, I mean, ec uh, financially, uh, they're uh, affordable, they can always go for PGS because patients in which the embryos are being assessed can have better result when the uh, IVF has, has been done and embryo transfers will be successful. Next. So this PGS has a bright future. Uh, so coming to the treatment of unexplained RPL, what can be done in unexplained RPL? Progesterone, we can give higher amount of progesterone. So we uh, progesterone, as I said, one of the uh, causes al al uh, luteal phase defect. So we can give uh, progesterone, higher amounts of progesterone in these patients. Uh, progesterone is produced by carpus luteum after ovulation. So it prepares the endometrium for the implantation. In case of failure in fertilization, carpus lute it, uh, carpus luteum, it goes into, it, uh, I mean, the, it converts into carpus luteum, which degenerates uh, and involution occurs. If fertilization is successful, then HCG stimulates carpus luteum to produce progesterone. So in case the fertilization is successful, uh, the carpus luteum uh, pro produces uh, progesterone in higher doses to protect the pregnancy till the placenta is formed. In some cases, carpus luteum uh, is deficient and doesn't produce enough amount of uh, progesterone. In such cases, we have to keep progesterone and HCG uh, from outside. Next. Progesterone induces secretory changes in endometrium. So what does this progesterone do? It causes maturation of the endometrium, which stabilizes the endometrium and implantation of the embryo happens and, it's, uh, and regulation of inflammatory mediators takes place. Adequate positive immune response in early pregnancy and preventing pregnancy loss. Progesterone is essential for pregnancy maintenance. Maintenance. Endogenous pro progesterone rises sharply after ovulation peaks the following week. Progesterone is produced by placenta, as I said later on, uh, when placenta is totally formed. Uh, placenta starts from 12 weeks and totally formed after 16 weeks. So till 12 to 16 weeks, we have to supplement progesterone in these patients with deficiency. Next. Um, so a nine-year uh, nine cohort study of a woman with otherwise unexplained RPL is done. Overall, live birth and miscarriage rates following progesterone supplementation was 63% and 36 six percent respectively. So this study provides support that progesterone supplementation reduces the subsequent miscarriages rate in patients with unexplained rectal miscarriages. So uh, so from 63 to 30, it has decreased to 36 percent. So this progesterone giving from uh, outside, supplementing from outside definitely helps to reduce the RPL. A meta-analysis of 10 RCTs, including uh, 1586 women with unexplained recurrent pregnancy loss, shows significant lower risk of recurrent uh, miscarriages, uh, 0.72, that is 95%, and a higher chance of live births was observed following supplementation with progesterone. So this study also says that there is a lot of difference uh, after giving uh, progesterone supplementation, there are the improving uh, live birth rates. 95% it has improved. A recent observ observational cohort study say, say, uh, uh, says that 
the vaginal micronized progesterone started 3 days after the urinary lh surge significantly improved pregnancy rates in women with unexplained rpl so three studies we have seen now three studies says that in unexplained infertility if we give progesterone supplement uh, supplementation till 16 weeks it has improved uh, it has decreased rpl that is recurrent pregnancy loss and improved live birth rates so in this rpl progesterone plays one of the important role so other strategy uh, strategies like intravenous immunoglobulin generally we doesn't uh, usually uh, follow this in our clinics uh, ivg have been used in women with uh, recurrent pregnancy loss but several trials failed to show any positive impact the recent meta analysis of 11 uh, randomized trials in women with urpl shows no difference in uh, live birth rates between uh, patients given uh, intravenous immunoglobulins or placebo so ivg is therefore not recommended for women with unexplained rpl next Thank you.